The date is 2018. We're all here for this one, which is good. So we'll go to three. We have two items on the agenda tonight. I'd like to remind council to refrain from asking questions until staff presentations are completed. So we'll start at 3.1. Council, you will receive an update and provide a feedback on the Parks and Recreation Department FY18 pickleball courts and softball field improvement plan projects. Our presenters are Nathan Torres, Parks and Recreation Director, and David Side, Parks and Recreation Manager. Welcome, gentlemen. We're anxious to hear. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're here tonight to present uh, two updates on, the, on two current CIP projects for the Parks and Recreation Department. The first one is uh, an update on the pickleball courts that are coming to Goodyear. And as you can see behind me, we have a, a large contingency from uh, the pickleball community that are excited to see courts coming to Goodyear. So maybe if we can have them stand, Mayor, and be recognized. There were a few others in attendance, um, but it ran a little late for them. So, um, but I did tell them we would recognize their, their presence. So, um, and with that, I'm going to turn things over to David uh, to present uh, tonight's topic. Thank you, Nathan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the first project I'll be sharing information on is the Pickle Pickleball Court project. Um, if you recall, about a year ago, that was a resident-driven request to provide some dedicated pickleball courts in Goodyear. Currently, there are no public dedicated pickleball courts within our uh, department system. Um, one of the short-term solutions we have attempted to uh, promote pickleball uh, in our parks is the restriping of tennis courts to make those dual purposes um, with the ultimate uh, goal of having some dedicated pickleball courts in the future. As a result of discussion and direction from council, we explored uh, adding some pickleball courts to our FY18 budget. Uh, the scope of that project was six new pickleball courts, and they were originally earmarked for Goodyear Community Park with a budget of $168,000. As we explored uh, the project, um, we went ahead and looked closer uh, at that northeastern portion of the unused uh, ball field there, um, which we had earmarked uh, for the pickleball courts. Um, as we began to look at that area in detail, um, we began to learn of the proximity to the neighboring residents to the east and the potential noise impact that adding pickleball courts may have. Um, when we went through an initial review of our project with development services, they definitely made mention of past projects, uh, one most notably being um, in uh, Pebble Creek in where pickleball courts were expanded and there were some resident noise concerns brought up. Um, following that, and in addition to the proximity uh, and distance from parking and restrooms, uh, staff collectively worked with engineering to look at alternative locations. As we started to look at alternative locations, the existing sport court complex came into view um, so currently we have uh, two NBA sized basketball courts that are outdoor lit and they also can be used for outdoor volleyball. Um, when we looked at this area, its proximity is cl much closer to the parking, much closer to the restrooms, it's already lit and it is quite a distance from any neighboring residences to minimize the potential noise impact. Um, Following those discussions and reviews, staff started looking more closely at what could we do to the existing slab and possibly modify those two NBA-sized basketball courts and possibly accommodate pickleball courts on the existing sport court slab. The industry best practice for sports courts is to cluster them together, maximize economy of scale on lighting, surface courts, fencing, and have them closer to uh, shared use parking and restrooms. So it kind of fell into place where, what if we modified this area a little bit? What if we shrunk the existing NBA size courts, which quite frankly uh, exceed the national best practice, which is high school regulation courts uh, found in a typical uh, community park, shifted those to the east and then free up some space there to actually um, construct for pickleball courts that would be dedicated to pickleball and not be shared amongst tennis. 
Um, we got pretty excited about that because as you can see on the rough sketch that we have, we do have that ability to um, reduce those basketball courts slightly, add the four pickleball courts, extend the slab on the south um, west portion of the existing court and really accommodate both uses uh, simultaneously. I want to be real clear that this modification would not reduce the amount of basketball courts. It would not reduce the amount of basketball hoops or standards, if you will. It would just reduce them from a 94-foot length uh, basketball court to an 84-foot length. And um, in the five years I've been here, I've never seen anybody out there um, playing uh, court line to court line on an NBA, NBA size court. Not saying it doesn't ever happen, but it's definitely not the norm. So when we started looking at this and taking it a little bit uh, closer, um, we definitely engaged our pickleball user groups. We definitely engaged um, current users of the basketball courts. We wanted to make sure that they had a chance to weigh in on this suggested change. And really their um, questions centered around why would the modifications be used? What are we attempting to accommodate? And once we shared that story of the popularity in pickleball, as you can see, and we've heard over the years, um, in addition to uh, maintaining uh, still two high school sized basketball courts, um, we definitely look forward to uh, pricing this out and see what, um, what this um, option uh, would look like if we were able to, uh, to, to go down that pathway. So um, with that, we went ahead and uh, worked with our uh, engineering department um, to um, take a look at what this project would cost. Um, the modifications um, would fall within budget. We would actually have a 12% contingency. We would um, be below our $168,000 original budget. Um, the project would take approximately 120 days to complete. And we are looking to launch this project and actually start on April 30th with a project completion date of June 30th. Um, with that, I'm gonna take a brief pause, pause and see if there's any questions or comments. I know normally we do that at the end, but since I have two projects, it might be opportune to focus on pickleball at the moment. Thank you, that's thoughtful. Uh, comments? Councilman Pizzillo. This is all within budget that you have right now, correct? Correct. And it allows you for the contingency for any overruns? Correct. Okay, thank you. I, I think it's a great idea. We're keeping both sports, and it, I, I like where you put them. I mean, I, it's great. So, thank you. That's my last word. Thank you. Well, I know that the people that are in the audience have been waiting a, a good long time, and um, I respect the ideas that you brought here. And quite frankly, being closer to the restrooms and having better lighting and all all the way around and not causing an impact on the neighborhood, I, I can understand and appreciate. Um, I think this is a good alternative. You know, I, I wish we could have, you know, had this six months ago, but, um, you know, I do respect what you guys came up with and uh, moving forward. Thank you. Councilman Hanson? Yeah, no, I think it's a good use of the, the area. I mean, I hate to lose the, uh, one of the full size courts, but sound like you said that there's not much use to it so so yeah so I thank you for being creative and finding a solution for pickleball courts and uh, yeah I'm excited to see people out there out there using it uh, dedicated to that so the day they open they will be used yeah exactly <laughs> good Councilman Stiff I absolutely agree with the location um, I think it having it more central to that park is really so much more more convenient um, I just yeah would love to see us get it done sooner rather than later. But thanks. Vice Mayor? And so the plan is just four pickleball cart courts rather than the six. That is correct, Vice Mayor Campbell. Yes. But we are still going to have a conversation to possibly put more pickleball courts later on in other parks, possibly. Right now, we're master planning the next community park, and that's targeted to have uh, six pickleball courts in it at the time at this time. Okay, great. Well, I was one of the people that walked the petition around Pebble Creek to even get a pickleball court. So, 
um, when we were successful. And then because we have over a thousand members in our club, we needed more courts and we made a lot of noise. And so they did have to build a wall around it. But I think we've mitigated the noise now because it's so popular. Um, I'm excited about this and I certainly hope that um, whenever you uh, have the courts finish, you'll do a ribbon cutting ceremony. Okay. For sure. Which would be nice. So thank you very much. Any other council comments? Well, I wanna thank the citizens. You know, we. Our goal is to make a, a quality of life, a quality of life for everybody in Goodyear. And uh, in order for us to know that, people have to come before us. Uh, sometimes we're astute enough to, to add the recreational facility when it needs to be. Uh, but this time, uh, this was new for us. But uh, compliments to staff figuring this out. Because it would be terrible for us to sit here after knowing that the other area with the noise would not be acceptable to the neighborhood, and I know because I live in Pebble Creek, and so I remember the, the consternation and the complaints when they originally changed those volley, the, those courts, the tennis courts, and bocce courts to, to pickleball. But it's a great sport, and it's amazing to me. It covers all age groups, so, um, and that's what we strive for, and, we, and you'll all know that when you get to these retirement years, to stay young and vital and healthy, uh, we need these kind of uh, exercise, so. I'm pleased. So, I think I think it's got uh, certainly the council in this work session is in positive reinforcement for this. So you have your direction. So we appreciate appreciate the presentation. Thank you, Mayor. Now, Mayor and Council, uh, with, with regard to the softball field project in Estrella, um, I want to acknowledge that we missed the mark with regards to project scope and project budget. Um, as you may recall, this was a late, uh, rather late arriving project. And looking back at it, I, I think the right thing would have been for staff to have uh, taken a pause and um, uh, possibly do more due diligence on project scope and pricing and, and some good research. Um, it would have meant delaying the project a year but I think we would have found ourselves, uh, staff, in a better situation to present uh, some uh, better numbers. And um, looking back, I, I just think that would have been the right approach from a staff perspective. Um, this is a great example of why the city as a whole is uh, taking a pause with regards to CIP projects and really making sure that we work through scopes and, and, and the project numbers uh, costing appropriately. Um, so. Uh, we, um, this isn't one of our finest moments, um, but uh, with challenges comes opportunities. And uh, we do think we as a staff have worked through this, this uh, problem and have come up with a pretty good alternative. So um, having said that, I'll, I'll turn things back to David, but I did want to recognize and acknowledge that uh, we missed the mark on this one. We appreciate that. Thank you, Nathan. Um, uh, if you recall, uh, about a year ago at this time, um, as Nathan mentioned, we had uh, the softball field um, brought forward. Um, it was resident driven as currently in the Foothills Community Park, there are no adult ball fields. So we have um, the three field Little League complex, but the uh, far easternmost field that you see on the rendition right there uh, was slated for phase two and, and hasn't uh, arrived. So. Um, when we did scope out uh, the project, we had the intention of one separate um, adult uh, baseball softball field that could be dual purpose. It would actually add inventory to Little League and would actually um, allow for adult play if someone was having a picnic or something of that sort. So um, the original budget for that project, uh, $318,000. Um, this is phase one that we currently have improved in Foothills Community Park. The additional ball field was to be built in that easternmost um, uh, air undeveloped area, as you can see. Um, when we started looking at this project, um, we, we, we had a couple fatal flaws. We, we made some assumptions that we have currently 90% design plans. We had anticipated we would be able to get those to 100% um, relatively inexpensively. And unfortunately, when we saw what it would take those plans to go from 90% to 100% with today's standards and to get those stamped and, and ready for uh, build, 
um, we, were, we were shocked. And, and that was kind of the first point um, that, that made us aware that, that we may have some budget challenges. In addition, um, although it's fairly uh, flat, there um, is some, some grading and drainage that would definitely have to be dealt with. Um, you can kind of see the vegetation there. Anytime you see a line of vegetation, obviously that's where water flows. So um, just making sure that that was contained and dealt with. Um, we, like Nathan mentioned, we, we didn't do our, our due diligence on that. We, um, we, 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 we missed the mark, and, and for that, uh, we're, we're not real happy or proud of. Um, but nonetheless, that's, that's where we found ourselves. Um, lastly, um, the lighting. Um, just to go ahead and install the lighting for the third field uh, came in at about three times of, uh, as what we had anticipated. So um, those, those things kind of mounted uh, quickly and, and really forced us to take a look at this project and, and consider some alternatives to ultimately salvage an adult um, opportunity out at Foothills. Um, when we started looking at alternatives, one thing that popped out to us was on the one of the original designs of the Foothills Community Park, the far eastern field actually was uh, intended to be a dual purpose uh, adult size um, youth adult ball field. So um, we, we naturally started there and started brainstorming, what if we took the existing easternmost field extended those fences out another 100 feet from their existing 200 feet to the 300 feet required for adults. What would that do for us as far as opportunities? Um, we, we know from our good partner, Goodyear Little League, that they are adding softball. So they would um, benefit from having a skinned infield and a softball field in the inventory, as well as when it's not being used for Goodyear Little League, um, members of the public could rent the field for adult softball on a drop-in basis, like I mentioned, if they had a park or something like that. We would absolutely um, make sure that our, our partners, Goodyear Little League, um, were taken care of, um, you know, for priority use of our fields. We're very supportive of that program, um, and we would make sure that there wouldn't be any conflict. So when we explored this opportunity, we definitely worked closely with Goodyear Little League. Um, we've been in follow-up with a resident who originally brought up this um, idea, and ultimately they're, they're just looking for a place that adults can play, which this would provide. So although um, it is um, above um, the current project budget and we have it estimated at $448,500, we would require an additional budget amount of $130,500 to our existing $318,000. Before we have discussion on that option, I do want to visit on um, ultimately option two, which would be to proceed with the original um, new ball field as scoped. Um, this would uh, bring on that easternmost ball field. It would provide op an, an additional field um, and maintain that opportunity for youth and adults to play. It would expand youth, base youth baseball uh, opportunities. Um, but as you can see, that, that's at a considerable uh, expense. So that total project cost, um, we have um, rough order magnitude cost estimates that we feel very comfortable with. but. Ultimately, that's $1,297,200. So um, with that, um, just under a, an additional million dollars would be required to um, see that project through. This is really where we find ourselves here, kind of at a crossroads, and, and, and definitely want input and guidance on exploring these two options. This really sums it up as far as what those two options and the budget impact that would be needed uh, to see them to fruition. Um, when we did explore options to fund uh, that deficit that we, that we face, um, we definitely reached out to finance. Um, we learned of a capital project reserve uh, fund that could be uh, utilized if council gave direction to explore that. Um, that project uh, is available and, and hasn't been spoken for at this time. And if council did so give direction to, to consider that, we would bring that forward um, at a regular meeting uh, for, for a budget transfer to see either of these projects through. Um, with, with that, I'll, I'll open it up to questions and, and conclude my presentation. I think it'll be a very stimulating meeting here. So <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going, Bill, I'm going to recognize um, Councilman Laura Tano since she lives in that area upstairs, and then I'll get to you next, OK? Appreciate that. Sherry? Uh, I, first of all, thank you for going through and getting this, those numbers. Sherry, uh, you got to speak in the microphone a little bit, please. 
Is this better? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for getting us those numbers <laughs> and everything, because I think it really does show where we're at. And, and understandable things sometimes cost more than what we understand. Um, I think you've done a lot for the park up there in the last couple of years. We've added the play area. We've had the community partnership with the bike park, adding that on. So I think we've been doing a lot up there, which is really good. And uh, the residents do appreciate that. I'm like option one. I think it's a great idea to expand that. And then if it grows in a couple of years and we need to add another field, I assume we still have room to add the other field at a later date. You do. My only other question, so I'm for option one. I think that's the most economical and it gets it, I would assume, done the quickest to get softball moving up there. Um, for the devotion field that's up behind the grade school, that was our first way back when Arizona, who has that and is that something that we can rehab or refurbish at some time or is that not us? I believe it's controlled by the school district and it's a youth size field. Okay. Because it had lights, so I was asking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Council Stiff. So just to be clear, if you expand, if you go with option one and expand the youth field now, that's not going to prohibit you from building option two later. There would have to be some, some redesign of that area, um, but I feel we would be able to, to fit in another ball field there. Yes. Some some question. Well, yeah, I'm trying to envision the extra... Uh, feet that are required there and it looks like it's going to impinge pretty much on that other that other thing because I agree with uh, with Sherry that um, I like I like option one so we can get something done now um, and I'd like to see how option two then fits into the CIP discussion for out years uh, as as that moves forward and since it's my favorite source of revenue, I'd like to see us think about the manager's contingency for that amount. I just wanted to surprise the new manager. <laughs> you know that, that's just a, that's an extra gift given to you as your new employee. Georgia, yeah. your art mayor. Just, just a moment, are you asking me to do something? Yeah. Well, I, I, I know he does, but we have we have Councilman Osborne waiting. So yes, please. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. So uh, thank you. Both of these projects, you know, I pushed for at the last budget, and um, and at that time, obviously, the thought of the price was something that was workable. So you know, I understand. Um, where you're, where you're sitting right now, and, and I, I get it. Um, two questions. So first of all, I, I'm with Bill and Sherry of the feeling of sticking with the first plan. And, um, and the reason being is that I think there is further discussion that would need to take place about that capital project reserve because I don't know what else is out there that we're not thinking about mm -hmm. by just saying yes to this right now. The other thing that I question too, um, and is a needs assessment of, you know, over the years we've seen where we're X amount of soccer field short, we're X amount of this short, you know, and so it opens up the question of, okay, is that what we're short or do we really need six more soccer fields in its place? So that's, you know, I asked that question too. That's a great question. And um, I think that master plan was done uh, so many years ago that, um, when phase two does come online, we anticipate having to remaster plan that and go back to the community and really assess what those needs are. Um, because just looking at phase two now, it may not be in line with, with what our needs are today. That's a, that's a great point. Right. So, so I, would, I would suggest that we stick with, you know, we're still giving the citizens what they were asking for up there, and that is that mm -hmm. softball field. And so, you know, I, I appreciate that. All right. Councilman Pazillo. I, I tend to agree with the discussion so far as far as, well, first I want to say I want to thank you for your honest and frank lead-in. It's nice and refreshing to say, hey, you know what? We didn't deliver what we thought, but, you know, it's a learning experience. So, again, I, I really, truly appreciate that. Second thing is I, I think as the other council members had mentioned about the uh, additional money, there's possibly other things, you know, fending for that. So I would rather see that come up in the, uh, you know, the budget process on the C, you know, on the CIP to see what others fighting for that additional 979,000 for option two. 
Okay. But I, I tend to agree. If, if you have no, uh, first of all, the 130,500 uh, finances told you that money is, is available without hurting some other project that's already in the uh, hopper. I'll have Doug answer that question, but I believe we were, and, and not to put Doug on the spot, but we were, we were uh, led to believe that currently no other projects were uh, completing, competing for that 1.6. Well, you just put them on the spot, so here you go. <laughs> factory, would you like him to come up? Well, let, let Doug. Yes, that would be better. <coughs> uh, Mrs. Chris, we do not have anything else in the hopper this morning. Okay, today. thank you, Doug. Uh, again, I'm, I'm with option one. Uh, I don't have a problem. Uh, apparently, the uh, the need is down there as long as there's no restricted and he's got the funds on there. I tend to go with one and wait till the budget process, pers you know, complete to see if there's the additional nine or like council member, you know, Osborne had mentioned, maybe there's other type of things you need that that money can go to as well if it's soccer fields, et cetera. Yeah, so we're not anticipating, if, if we go with option one, we're not anticipating be, bringing a budget uh, request back this year for option two. That will be handled when phase two of the park kicks in, and we think that's somewhere around the 10-year mark from now. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor Campbell. Well, thank you, Nathan and David. Um, I do understand the master plan, and it doesn't matter how well we master plan as we move through the master plan, things change. Um, the economy changes, and we always are faced with that, and inflation, everything. Um, we do thank you for letting us, or telling us that um, you underestimated it, because we know up front it was underestimated, and we have learned through some other projects that were underestimated, but after the fact that we were in the middle of them. So we appreciate that. I think, too, that if we do option one, which would let us have an adult softball field up there now, and they could use it for their seasons, and if they don't use it for their season, then we could let the public use it, because there are a lot of churches and, and groups that like to get a softball team together and have their own little tournaments or whatever. Um, but we can talk about the um, $1.2 million project when you are more ready to go forward. So I, 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 I have to tell you, everything is going up. What you estimated five years ago does not pencil out today. So don't feel bad. It's just unfortunately that everything has skyrocketed. So, And now that the economy is better, the prices are higher, and it's going to cost us a lot more money to provide these amenities for our residents. And we have to figure out how we can pay for them and how we can provide for it. And I'd like to someday see that park finished because it's such a jewel up there. And it's, it's a wonderful amenity for those folks that live up there and those of us that go up there to watch the Little League games. It's a lot of fun. So thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much. And uh, don't beat yourself up about no. that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Brandon. See, Brandon, sorry about that. Just being quiet. Council Hampton, <laughs> you're on. Yeah, so reiterate what everybody else said here, but yeah, I like option one as well. I like to look at the budget for the full ballpark. I'd like to get the other one in there sooner than later. I don't know what the feasibility or what the needs assessment would say, but I think that'd be good for residents up there. And then is uh, the east one the only one that can expand? I see that, I don't know if we would affect the northern one or not as another option to get maybe two in there. I think it's like the third one would probably affect our new um, playground and the soccer fields. But I don't know if we could go east without affecting that, the um, the pump track or not. So I just look at other options to get more, <coughs> more use out of the fields if possible. So sure. the, for, this one was the most viable uh, from an expansion yeah. standpoint of not going into the soccer fields or the uh, the pump track. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking at other, with another hundred thousand to get us a second field, as, a second expansion of a field as well. So I'm just curious about that. But yeah, no, thank you. I think it's uh, it's important to have options for residents, and this is a, obviously just like the pickleball court. It's a it's a um, resident driven initiative. I like to uh, see see that through the other all, all the resident driven projects. So helps with uh, yeah quality of life and health and wellness. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, of course, I agree with option one, um, and appreciate you coming back and giving us an option. All right, to solve the problem. And again, stop beating yourselves up. You know, we've got a couple park things going on. They're developing a central park there on, on Yuma and Australia, and we're doing the health park. Uh, you know, 
So a lot, you know, you're only, the, the department is only so big and, uh, and you've worked long, long hours on everything. So we've come to the table, we've got a solution. So uh, this is just an agreement on this today and we'll take it on to the next meeting. Thank, Thank you, you so Council. much, I really Thank appreciate you. it. All right, let's go on to 3.2. Staff will provide an update and seek direction from Council on the proposed site for the South Goodyear Fire Station 186. Our presenters are Chief Paul Luizzi and Fire Chief, Fire Chief, and I, twice I gave you the Chief, and Rebecca Zook, our engineer. What a combination. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this evening with the Chief uh, to discuss the site selection and um, our rec uh, staff's recommendation uh, for Fire Station 186. Again, that is our second fire station in EMR, and I'll be referring it to it tonight as 186. And then uh, we'll also be providing you a recommendation based on uh, a significant analysis that we've done internally and as well as reaching out to our stakeholders, uh, the fire department, our um, soon-to-be architect, and their team as well. So just to give us uh, a bit of an orientation, uh, we're talking again about uh, Fire Station 186, which is uh, at the southern reaches of the Australia community. Uh, I've shown the overall location and then sort of a, a, a blow-up version of the siting area that we're looking at, which is uh, between Rainbow Valley, Australia Parkway, and Willis Road area just south of Ray. That's really where we were focusing our attention. As you can see, we uh, have denoted where the current fire station is in Australia Mountain Ranch. So fire station 182 is the most northern point on that map. Uh, to the west there is our automatic aid partner, Buckeye Valley Fire Station 326. They're at uh, Rainbow and Arlington, roughly. And then you can see uh, the city-owned site that we have is uh, at Rainbow Valley Road in, in Willis on the most western portion of that as well. So um, how we uh, started looking at this, again, we have um, the city-owned property, which was acquired over 10 years ago. And we wanted to make sure that we looked at the entire area instead of just looking at the site that we currently owned and assumed that that was the best for us. So we reached out to our partner in Newland, and they were gracious enough to begin having conversations with us about this entire area. And so up in the right-hand corner of the photograph, you can see um, some A, B, C, D. We had nine different sites that we wanted to look at up in the uh, Willis Road and Estrella Parkway intersection. And we did look at that, those, uh, a number of them, with our partners in the fire department. We were looking at access. We were looking at site improvements. Uh, we looked at just uh, an enormous amount of what we need to bring with water and sewer bringing it to the site. Uh, and we ended up only having one viable site, which was D, which is located south of the Willis Road intersection and on the east side of Estrella Parkway. Once we got to that point, we wanted to take that new site uh, on Estrella Parkway and do a, some final analysis and compare it to our existing site that we currently own on Willis Road. With that, we looked at more detailed um, uh, layouts of how the fire station would be situated, what would be the access to and from the site as you would exit the site going east, west, north, south. We really tried to look at all of the opportunities there to make sure we were making the right um, choice. And then uh, we also looked at the response time maps. The, I'm going to hand that over to Paul in just a minute for the next two slides. But beyond that, we also looked at the site improvements. We looked at what would happen on site. Most of those are usually standard improvements that you would have with your uh, parking lot and access uh, to the bays and exit from the site. And then we also looked at the off-site. So how far would we have to bring water or sewer to the site? What type of drainage impacts would we have? 
And then we finally looked at our proximity to existing facilities and infrastructure and if there were any benefits that we could uh, realize from that. And then the last item was the rezoning process. Both of these sites are not currently zoned for a public facility. However, with the existing site that we currently own, it has been known uh, to the public for um, over 10 years as a fire station site, and uh, it's in their PAD documents. Uh, and the actual underlying zoning, though, is um, employment. And then we have the new site that we're looking at on Australia. That's currently zoned for single-family residential. So as Rebecca said, here are the response analysis on the two sites. So first we're gonna look at Rainbow and Willis. Uh, you can see uh, the green is the four minute response time, yellow uh, is six minutes, eight is the red, and then the 10 minutes is the blue. Uh, so pretty good uh, response times from that station at Rainbow and Willis. Still allows us access into the Cantamia neighborhood. Uh, there is a uh, back uh, access road uh, street that goes in off of Willis, as well as uh, Mountain View uh, to the north and east allows us access into the Montecito neighborhood as well. So uh, decent access from, from that point in time. We've also talked to you previously about the North Waterman Wash uh, as well. So that, you know, has about a six minute response time down to just about Chandler Heights Road. So very similar to the previous map that you had seen when we talked about the North Waterman Wash. And then uh, we also looked at the um, Willis and Australia Parkway location. So again, still have access uh, to Canamia. Montecito will have to go a little bit further north and then head back east to get back into the Montecito neighborhood. Uh, it is located along an arterial road, which sometimes, you know, as, as certainly won't be a problem right now, but as time progresses, uh, could be a, a little bit of an issue having the station right on an arterial road. Um, but again, still kind of gives us a six minute response time down into that North Waterman Wash area. So they're, for the most part, they're, they're pretty much similar uh, from, from either site as in response time and analysis. So again, back to a little bit more detailed uh, uh, consideration of the financial impact to each site option. Uh, again, the first Willis Road existing um, site. The standard cost for doing, uh, completing the improvements around a fire station site are approximately 1.4 million. The most significant portion of that cost is the paving and the concrete because they need to be reinforced because of the fire truck. And then uh, we also looked at the changes to that overall site plan um, and how that would be impacted regardless of, of which site you were at. So with the first Willis Road, um, there are actually some of the um, improvements are the curb, gutter, and sidewalk that would be associated. And so some of that, uh, we have some decreases with costs there. Um, and we included a right turn lane. And then for the Estrella Park, uh, Parkway site, the sewer and fill costs were the most significant. Um, that particular site sets about four to five feet lower than the roadway at that location, so we would be bringing fill in. Uh, in addition, there would be a median cut required of the existing median in Australia, and we'd be carrying sewer about 800 linear feet to the site. So with all of the information that we had, we, we sort of put sort of a pros and cons list together. And again, I, I don't wanna go over these again because we've touched on them. They both need to re, be rezoned. There's some site concerns with the Australia Parkway, uh, potential drainage impacts. There's a significant amount of drainage coming from the, the Northeast. Um, the Rainbow uh, and Willis site, uh, we don't have any access concerns. The site's a little bit larger for us. The rezoning process, all, although we would still need to do it, uh, would appear to be a little more straightforward with uh, the Newland community. The overall, um, this is just a recap of the financial um, portion that has been approved with uh, the budget already. There's $5 million, a little over $5 million with the station uh, itself. 
Uh, we have vehicle costs also, and then personnel um, costs that are uh, from fiscal year 20 to 24 that are already included. Uh, with that, um, we just wanted to uh, rid, uh, give you staff's recommendation, which is actually to stay with the current site that we have uh, and continue to work with our partner in Newland Communities. And we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Who would like to go on? Councilman Lozano. I'll just start again. Um, I, I guess when I look to see where 182 is, and because that's already on Estrella, and I could be wrong, but it looks like having it on Willis gives you more coverage on that area rather than having them lined up. Am I off or? No, I mean, I think they are similar in their coverage. I, I believe it's my opinion that the Willis and Rainbow Valley site gives you a little bit, you know, deeper coverage you can see from the green there. Um, it's. I'm just thinking almost, then you add 182's green area, it seems like we have I, more. Covered. So I guess I guess yeah. I'm from what you're saying. I would agree with staff's recommendation yep. to, to do the Willis. It just seems like it goes where the building's going to be rather than just yes. lining them up on Australia. So correct. So I'm I'm good with that. Councilman Hampton. Getting early this time. I know. I got yeah. it. <laughs> no, I no, I agree. I agree with um, Councilwoman Molitano as well with the um, the location. I just I I guess I was confused. I thought. The one up north or farther over was a different location. I thought that was a done deal, but I didn't realize we were still deciding on which one. So, but I'm glad to see that we're that we that we're coming to a decision now. And then, I guess I just I just misunderstood, but I appreciate you bringing it back here. So, um, and then you said the land swap with Newland, is that? So, I guess I understand the, the deal, or if there is a deal that we made. So if we go with the one we own right now, the four acre one on Willis, is the the site D, was there a deal where we were gonna swap land at some point? Or we still, is that still an option? Or is, but yeah, is, is there an option? Or what's the, I guess, is there something future there we could do there? So pre previously last year, we had brought to you uh, the idea of a, a resolution uh, which would allow the city manager to discuss those other site options with Newland. So we needed that piece to, as part of the development agreement to be able to allow the city manager to start talking with Newland about a potential swap. But you know, through our site analysis, and as <coughs> Rebecca stated throughout her presentation, we looked at a lot of different sites and we typically, you know, what we came down to is just really just those two sites and we realized there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the Australia Willis site, much more than our original site. So, you know, what we wanted to bring to you guys was uh, the decision at this point, you know, in, in, our, in, in our impression that we should stay at the original site, really no need to, to make that move and, and have more cost for, yeah. no. for the on-sites. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I appreciate it. I think it's a, it looks like the, the best, the best solution and the best thing for the Australia area, that whole region up there. So, yeah, thank you for, for bringing it. Okay. Councilman Stiff? I don't um, disagree with the recommendation at all, but um, I do have a question. How did we end up even looking at option D since we've had this property all along? Um, Where did option D come from? That's a good question. Uh, we had had uh, conversations um, you know, making sure that that was in the right spot. Um, when we had the fire station study that was uh, finished at, in December of, uh, of 2016, we, uh, we had them look at that area specifically and see where the best location would be. So uh, during the fire station study, they, they looked at a lot of those areas uh, and uh, specifically they looked at Australia and Willis as kind of the optimal site but also the, um, the response map and the heat map also provided uh, a little bit more westerly of that intersection as a, a, a good area to be in a, in a response uh, zone from. So uh, I think from that piece, from the fire station uh, study, the, those conversations started to occur with, with Newland about you know, what's the best location. So you know, we, we did our due diligence and really looked at all the different sites 
And what ultimately we found out was that, that a lot of the on-site improvements at Australian Wells was just going to be a lot more than what we needed to, to spend. Sure. The situation sounds very similar to the relocation of 181. Yeah. Site said the yeah. study suggested an optimal location, but there was a an alternative correct. that fits the need as well. So this isn't right. much different than that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thanks. Councilman Osborne. Thank you. Thank you for doing your due diligence. And, uh, you know, it shows our citizens that you take everything into consideration. But most of all, at the end of the day, it's the most lives we can cover yeah. at the quickest response time. And, um, and that's what we're doing. And so I, I appreciate you bringing it back. Councilman Bazil? Yeah, I don't have a problem with what you recommend, especially since the savings is what, about 300,000? So from a location of a site is concerned, that is, that is something, especially um, since you're not showing a whole lot of difference between the two on the response times, um, I've got to go with option one because of the cost. Thanks. Thanks. Vice Mayor? Okay, so my question, Chief, is um, the cost to us to do the recommendations of the right turn lane in that will cost us an additional $1.3 million, correct? Oh, excuse me, Rebecca, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's okay. So the right turn lane, curb, gutter, and sidewalk will actually be included in that $1.4 no, million. That's what I mean, yeah. This is additional. We own the land, and this, will, this is what it's going to cost us to put our fire station on that land. Yes, absolutely. And those, uh, the right turn lane, curb, gutter, and sidewalk are in addition to the on-site improvements that are also wrapped into that 1.4. Perfect. And we're going to be on sewer and everything up there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And my next question is, um, once we, if we say this is where we want the fire station to be sited, will we see what the fire station is going to look like sometime? Um, absolutely. What I can tell you is we're um, uh, almost finalizing the scope and fee for our architectural team, and we hope to be bringing that contract to council on March 22nd. Okay. That'll get them, I'm sorry, March 26th. Um, get, that will get them moving in preparing actual documents for future consideration by council. Actually design it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Correct. Thank you so much. Council Nassar? No? I thought you said Martha. Well, I think we're all in agreement on this. Thank you much for the work, um, and we look forward to the next time that we see the design. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Council, I'm, I'm sure we're going to use any of your Council information at the next meeting, okay? And uh, the manager's summary, I think we're all right. So I'm going to adjourn this meeting, and then we're going to open the regular meeting. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>